Hello everyone, this is Fahim Jackson, and this is one episode 138 of my podcast show, In The Know. This podcast is aimed at trying to guide people through the world with a variety of topics. Each season, there will be a particular group of topics. Within these topics, I am asking questions and trying my best to answer these questions with viewpoints of the world around me. The following introduction speech is for the topic of today. And that introduction speech is why getting back in the gym after taking time off is a process. As someone who has taken time off of the gym experience, I'll tell you firsthand, it can be difficult to come back, especially when you're someone that has taken off for a long period of time. I can attest to this because in my 20s, I wasn't exercising as much as I am now. It was a weird feeling once I decided to come back to the gym. There were some physical pains that nagged me for a little bit, and maybe that was due to the fact that I was out of the loop for a long time. Your body needs time to get acclimated to what you're doing. I will discuss this more in the episode in detail regarding getting back in the gym. So as with any episode, sit back, listen, enjoy, as well as share with your community of friends and family. Also, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel in the description of this video. So, taking time off. We all have reasons as to why we take time off from the gym. I know after high school, a lot of people aren't necessarily taking time off. They just stop doing it once there's no more requirement coming from school. Because college is a place where exercise is elected. Back to me, I was always running around the track at the rec center in college. I even played intramural sports from time to time. But after undergraduate school, I took some time off in graduate school. And I was not feeling too good about myself. My health was questionable because I was dealing with vitamin D deficiency. Ever since I got back to normal eating and exercise, the feelings internally have changed. Now, this episode is about taking time off. Well, how shall I break down this time being taken off? Meaning, what typically happens when you take off certain amounts of time? Let's look at taking off a week. This is something I can speak of from experience. And to be honest with you, not much change takes place from taking off a week than a year. You have Certain workouts that tend to be affected slightly, but after about a week or two, you're back to where you need to be. There's no muscle memory that takes time to get back to. It's only been seven days, so your body, you're only taking a slight raise. I mean, sorry, it's only been seven days, so to your body, it's only a slight rest. Then you come back to normal. But like I said, I would still move just a little slowly. Meaning if you lift 250 pounds and take off a week, go down 10 or 15 pounds and work yourself back up again until you are back at 250 or more. Then again, what happened once you take time off that's a little more? How about once a week turns into a month? Taking a month off. As for a month from exercise, this is when you generally sustain an injury that takes you away for four to eight weeks. And injuries take time to heal. You have to make sure you are actually lifting weights, which aids in the rehab process when taking off a month. But strength training should be something light until you build your muscle back up again. Or another reason for taking off a month could be stepping back to get a few things in order for a short period of time. What are some of those things in order? They could be cutting back on some ills for your financial health. That doesn't mean giving up on fitness, but refocusing your time temporarily. Making sure your priorities are in order so that when you return back to the fitness center, your mind is ready to work. But, and there is a but, what happens when the person takes off an even more substantial amount of time? Let's look at taking off a year. If you take off a year, you will notice that movements is not as nimble as it used to be. You'll wake up in the morning and not be able to fight the early morning as before. And if one decides to come back, it will affect your muscle memory. Here's when you begin to see yourself getting weaker when you take a year off. You'll also start to forget those daily workouts you once performed. Weight will fluctuate and unfortunately place you in a position of being overweight or underweight. For far too many people, weight gain is a possible problem. This year's time frame is when you'll lose your motivation to come back when necessary. So we still have not gotten to the toughest takeoff time period. And that is when you decide to go for an even longer period of time than a year. Here is the pinnacle of time taking off when coming back is close to impossible. Taking off 
years. This is a time frame that I have taken off. As a matter of fact, throughout my 20s, I took off for years. And let me tell you something. I came back after taking so long off and my legs were quite sore the next day. It's because my legs were taking time and trying to figure out what in the world I was doing. Your body will become more sluggish when working and sleeping will also change. I can speak on this because I know what it feels like to take off and my body feels less healthy. I got that weird tingling feeling in my feet because I ate less healthy as well as I did before. Before this, I started to have these internal problems that were more geared towards cerebral. I will talk about this later in the episode. For more about taking off time that has turned into years, the way you approach life is different. Also, fitness has forced me to do things that I didn't want to do. I will look outside and come up with a reason for not going out to exercise. This is a reality that is even more apparent once you take off years. You get used to being out of shape and it's not a big deal to be overweight and out of shape. Now overall, how do you come back once you've taken off time? Deciding to come back to the gym. Whenever you decide to come back to the gym after taking time off, you're going to feel this weird feeling dependent upon the muscle you're working. For me, I performed leg workouts and needed a shot at the doctor's office a few days later. It's because I had taken off way too much time. What I found is that it really didn't matter the amount of weight I was willing to lift. That most likely probably would take would have taken place, which is that pain in my legs. So you have to just fight through the initial pain and stress of trying to get back. Then you have to think about some form of meal plan in order to keep you healthy. Because you can get back to lifting, but bad food habits won't aid you. Now something that will come along with what I'm talking about is how to properly come back and take things slowly. And that leads me into the next section. Taking it slow after a lengthy time off. Now I spoke about this from a quick glance. And what I will say about coming back from a lengthy time period is to be patient. Patience is important because you're going to need it in order to come back to where you were in a better place than before. You don't want to overexert and injure yourself because trust me, I've been there before. So you should first consult with the fitness instructors that will guide you in how to make use of the equipment. Then on the day when you're ready to go inside and get to work, start with light equipment and work your way up. Even if you have the strength to lift more, be cautious, especially if you have not been at it for quite some time. You still should build up so the muscle memory comes back. Don't overexert yourself. Above all, you're going to have to put yourself in a really good mental space to return. And depending on how long you have been away, it will mean your mind has to be stronger. So with that, let's observe taking away from lifting for a short period of time. Where does the mind have to be to become successful in the goals? The mentality of short-term time off. When it comes time to figure out what mind frame to be in when coming back to exercise after taking a short period of time off, it's easier than longer. But just because you've taken off a small portion of time does not mean it's easy. It is quite simple to go from a short period of time to a long period because in your mind you say, hey, it's only been a week. Why don't I take off another? It won't hurt. Here's when you start to find yourself in a position where you could easily be in a long-term scenario. So it should not be too hard to come back of, off of a, a short period of time to do your workouts. Then again, short-term is subjective because a month long could be short-term. This is actually a time frame that is very easy to get out of control as well. And from here, where's the mentality of a person coming back after a lengthy period? The mentality of long-term taking off. Whenever you have taken a long time period off, I know about this because I took off nearly a decade. And from leaving college until I was in my early 30s, I didn't go to the gym. And going to the YMCA and graduate doesn't count because I did it for like a month and I quit. My lifting journey now is about a few years in. So this is the longest and it feels great. Now the mindset of a person who takes off wants to come back. But there's a certain level of discipline that a lot of people already don't have. You go to work, get off, and come home. Here's when you can't get back up off the couch and leave and go back to the gym. This is usually when you have taken a year or more off. And longer time periods, when you can't even remember the last time you were in shape. Here's a space where you don't want to be. 
Letting yourself go is never good and it generally manifests in other areas of your life. You get lazy in the building stages of life. Life goals become easy to push to the side. Very rarely do you find people who are health conscious and lacking success. This tends to make sense simply because pushing yourself to success means taking comfort and keeping you healthy. Your health means working longer over time, giving yourself time to build and maintain through your success when you go for it. So since I have been going strong for so long, what are some of the life lessons? What life lessons have I learned from taking time off? As someone who has been following this fitness journey for the past four years, I've been trying a variety of things from new exercises to eating certain meals. But this episode is regarding coming back after taking time off. And this is something that I have dealt with in the past, simply because it's quite difficult to lift weights on a consistent basis. I'm someone who is used to doing it by now, so falling off is not something I am seeing myself doing. I would say for those of you not working out on a consistent basis, that you take off as little time as possible because if you take off a little too long, then you're on the risk of not coming back. That's why I brought up the topic of mentality of the people who take time off. It truly shows the thought process of the person who gives up. What I will say is this, if you're not strong enough to take time off, Try your best to keep yourself consistent. I can take time off because at this point in life, it's almost second nature for me to come back. So with this show wrap up, while we have to ask the question, how to get back in the gym after taking time off? In this episode, I didn't think that much was actually going to come of this episode. Really, I was planning on making this straight to the point and as simple as possible. But I managed to gain a lot more than I thought I would. And hopefully you can gain something as well because so many people take time away from the gym. Some days, weeks, months, or even years. And the longer you take off, the harder it is to come back. But if you can maintain and hold on, the rewards are worth it. Not just from a health standpoint, but an aesthetic standpoint as well. So thanks for listening, Taylor No. And I'll be bringing you another episode regarding fitness and wellness, and that is how long should you be working out in the gym to get a good workout for the session you're there?